Hi, I'm Cynthia Kahn, founder of Amuse Now, and I'm here today with composer and mystical recording artist Sherelle Renee Childs. Hey, Sherelle Renee. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great today. How about you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm actually very excited for this interview because it's my first interview in my native language since 2007, so this is exciting. <laughs> Well, now you now we're going to have to ask you what language you've been speaking and where are you? <laughs> um, I'm in Quito, Ecuador, and all the interviews I've done since I got here have obviously been in Spanish because they've been only for an Ecuadorian audience, but this one's more for a global audience. <laughs> so that's this is exciting. <laughs> it's exciting for me. I, I've never interviewed anyone in Ecuador before. There we go. <laughs> cool. Well, your music is so dreamy and wonderful. It was really hard to pick a favorite, but if I had to, I would. I chose the Portal. It's gorgeous. Oh, really? That was probably the most fun one to record. Because <laughs> I mean, we've got this guy singing in Turkish, and then I went into the studio with the other girl who does all the improv stuff, and. I don't know. I've never been left speechless on a recording, but when she recorded her improv, I was just like, wow, I don't even know what to say to you. <laughs> and that was, yeah, that was probably one of the most fun ones I've ever recorded, even though they've all been a lot of fun. <laughs> well, all of those are an amazing piece. I just love the story told through Legend's Ghost. So for those who don't know about it, Tell us about the fantastic project and the marvelous songs that make up the legend. Okay, well, I, where to begin? It's very, there's kind of a lot to it, but basically what I do with Legends Ghost is I, I write my music and then I try to get people from all over the world to help me record it. And some of these people are people I know personally and some of them are just people I happen to find on the internet. And I've been doing this for about 10 years now, but I'm just now ready to release the first album. And this particular album, it's kind of one of those stories that you can't really put into one little neat storyline, like, oh, this is the beginning, this is the middle, this is the end. It's a little bit more kind of spacey and intuitive and but I'll do the best I can to explain it. It's basically about an artist who is well she's kind of this really socially awkward person who doesn't really fit in but she's an amazing artist, an amazing well musical artist and she is doing this ritual based on a completely fictional pagan religion, where she is trying to find her muse spirit called the Songweaver, and along, um, along her journey during this ritual, she meets all of these spirits called gatekeepers, who are basically muse spirits who, um, who tell her their life stories, and it's usually kind of the romantic and sexual side of their stories, but it's all metaphors for the artistic process. Like, for example, in the song The Full Moon at Midnight, um, the, um, there's a girl, an innocent young girl, and she's trying to seduce this guy that she likes, but he just doesn't feel that way about her, and she ends up feeling humiliated in the end. And I think a lot of people can kind of relate to that idea on a personal level, but it also kind of has a metaphorical side to it as well. Um, Sometimes we as artists put our hearts and souls into, this, into our work and we just think it's great and we just can't wait to share it with people and then we share it with people and they're just like, oh, that's nothing very interesting. And it's, for an artist, that's kind of difficult. It's, it can be pretty devastating. And so that's what that song symbolizes and there's other songs that symbolize more positive aspects of the creative process as well. But that's probably the most 
direct metaphorical connection on the album. Everything else is a little bit more subtle. <laughs> well, it's wonderful. I didn't get that from the the song <laughs> because you get so lost in the music because it's very orchestral and the voices are just another musical instrument to me. So how would you describe your music? Well, um, it's from a technical standpoint, I'd say it's kind of gothic symphonic metal, but I've heard it compared to like Le Musée d'Aube and even Disney. So I guess it is kind of theatrical. I kind of see my music as kind of a big mishmash melting pot thing of pretty much every musical experience I've had because I'm I'm mostly classically trained but I played flute in a hip-hop band for a while and I ended up using the singer in that hip-hop band on one of my songs because I just loved her vocal style and I kind of started incorporating her way of singing into my way of singing as well, so I've had those kind of experiences with a lot of people and it's just, it all just kind of gets woven together inside my mind and then out comes all this music. <laughs> so. Well, Legends Ghost is more than just wonderful music, it's also a website and you have guest artists. Do, how do you get to be a guest on Legends Ghost and what is it that you look for? Well, like I said before, a lot of them are people I personally know, or they're friends of mine, or they're people I've worked with before. Like uh, Olga Nalp, the guy who sings on the portal, he was on another project with me, um, Corsair, which I think will be out shortly. But um, I am always open to meeting new musicians, but what I look for, of course, is like really good musicianship, obviously, but I think I also like to have somebody who has a certain quality about them that fascinates me, and I can't always put my finger on what that is. And so if somebody is interested in being one of my guest artists, by all means send me the demo, and if you're right for a character that I'm currently working with, then Sure, I'd love to work with you, but if not, and you're still, if you're not right for anybody that I currently need, but I still think you're really fascinating in some way, there's chances are I'll write a song for you. I've done that for people before. Very I'm actually cool. a song for <laughs> an artist that I find really fascinating right now. I'm not going to say who it is, but I am writing a song for this person, and I'm hoping we'll get to work together. <laughs> oh, is it somebody famous? <laughs> Kind of, yes. <laughs> but even people who aren't really famous, it's, um, I don't really like to say, oh, I'm writing a song for such and such a person, even if no one's ever heard of them. Because then if they end up not wanting to do it, then we both look kind of silly. <laughs> Which is back to the theme of that one song you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because I'm a painter, I couldn't help but be drawn to your paintings, and I see there's some on the wall behind you. They appear so surreal and extraterrestrial. Tell us more about your artwork. Yeah, um, I actually paint more as a hobby rather than, oh, I'm trying to be the next Vincent van Gogh. But it's more like I learned to paint when I was about 14 or 15, and I really liked my art class at school, I just never pursued it further, and then shortly after I turned 30, I just suddenly decided I wanted to paint again. And so I went to the store and I bought some pencils and brushes and all that stuff. And I started painting and I realized I just wanted to draw all the crazy imagery that was in my head, even if I don't really have this like really strong technique, I'm more self-taught, but I wanted to draw all the crazy things that are in my head, and a lot of them are kind of outer space related. Like, for example, when I was about six or seven, I used to sit in bed at night and think about the universe and what the edge of the universe might have looked like. 
And I kind of got to imagining it being this big brick wall that you just, you'd be in your spaceship and you're going along and then bang, you hit the brick wall. And so then in my early 30s, I decided to go and paint my seven-year-old self's concept of the edge of the universe. And a lot of mine just kind of, a lot of my paintings just kind of have that idea. Like I draw what's in my head or I draw things I found fascinating when I was a child. And it's, for me, it's just kind of a way to relax. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank yeah. You. Got more than those, but <laughs> oh, I can see the brick wall now, and now I know what it means. <laughs> the one in the corner. <laughs> Very cool. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I love outer space and I love Halloween, and I think most people can kind of figure that out by looking at my paintings. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I'm used now is about artists helping artists, and you've done a lot of different types of art. What advice do you have for other artists who are trying to make a name for themselves? What I've been trying to do is just take every opportunity I can, as long as it's not just completely wrong for me or something. Because <laughs> I don't think you're going to hear Song Weaver in a Pepsi commercial or something. <laughs> but <laughs> I do take all the opportunities I can. I'm on Reverb Nation. I try to make connections. Um, and I have my website, but beyond that, I'm kind of not really sure what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I think then your advice is take advantage of all opportunities that you can and just take it one step at a time and keep moving forward. <laughs> yeah, because I started this whole thing in 2004. I was 21, and I didn't know what I was doing musically, really. I just kind of decided I wanted to do this and I started putting it together and now the CD is almost finished 10 years later and I, it suddenly occurred to me, wait a minute, it doesn't, it won't do just to write it, I actually have to tell people about it and now I'm trying to figure out how exactly to do that and so this is actually a really good opportunity for me. Which leads me to ask, What's up next for Sherelle Renee Childs besides promoting her brand new Many Years in the Making CD? Yeah, well, the CD will probably be out within the next couple of weeks. I'm hoping, I was aiming for Halloween, but it looks like early November now. Um, I've, I've also started recording a work based on Edgar Allan Poe's poem, The Raven, so I'm already kind of working on this new album. I've got another album I wrote when I was younger that I want to produce. Um, and I've also, I'm also a voiceover artist. And I did, um, I did a web series called Ian Something last year. One episode is up. I'm hoping there will be more up later. But if you guys want to check it out, that would be great. Um, and I recently did a short film for children. I did the voice of a rabbit in Africa who tries to outwit a lion who wants to eat a tourist. It was a blast. And I'm thinking that's going to be out in the winter. That will be on Insane Hamster Productions. They've even got their own YouTube channel. So. I'm planning to move back to the US to promote my music and I'm hoping to be able to go to Europe to both promote my album with Legends Ghost and another artist's album that I took part in. Well, you're definitely very busy. <laughs> Darrell Renee, it's been wonderful getting to know you today. <laughs> well, thanks. I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> Well, I wish you all the best on Legends Ghost and all of the other voiceover projects that you're working on and your artwork. Well, thank you. Well, yeah. have a wonderful rest of your day. You too. Thanks for inviting me. Hi, I'm Cynthia Kahn, founder of Amuse Now. This featured artist presentation has been brought to you by Amuse Now Entertainment a website that enables artists to profit from their creativity. 
To learn more about Amuse Now, visit us at www.amusednow.com or email me at ccon at amusenow.com.